9 frames per second. Let's see what it does. There's about 200 ducks in this little bay right here. And they're all migratory ducks, so I'm not sure what they are. I'm going to see if I can get a little closer and show you what they look like. Come on. The mangroves provided the perfect cover to get a better look at these ducks. Here's a closer look at these winter visitors. These are lesser or greater scops. And as you can easily see, there were quite a few of them busily feeding, but there was a rare winter bird hiding within this group of ducks. Check out this bird. This is a female horned grebe, and I've never seen one of these before. The sun had risen just enough behind me to really light up this bird's head and give you that nice red crazy colored eye. Back to the inlet in search of some fast moving birds. That red flag means there is a high surf advisory and far out past the mouth of the inlet were hundreds of birds feeding. They didn't mind the rough seas, but these birds were too far away to get any clear images. I needed to find some closer subjects to test out the grip on my D850. This turn with a very large shrimp decided to fly in for my first run and the 9 frames per second didn't disappoint. This bird provided me with some great photo opportunities as it flew directly overhead and then banked just slightly which put some great light on the entire bird. In this shot you can actually see the shrimp's long hair-like antenna. I also noticed this bird is banded. This was all shot handheld. Had I been using a tripod, I most likely would have missed this flyby because it happened so fast. The D850 with the grip didn't miss a single moment. The tide is really rushing in right now. So we're at almost high tide and there's pelicans feeding all along the water here. Kind of lazy like. And I see some herons and uh, some snowy egrets feeding down by the rock, so it looks like it's going to be really cool. This very hungry snowy egret caught my eye, and the turbulent water behind and around this bird's feet would make for some very interesting backgrounds while the bird was catching food. In this first shot, the snowy egret was patiently waiting for the perfect moment to grab a fish as the waves splashed on the submerged rocks. A small wave rolls in and the snowy egret uses this opportunity to grab a tiny fish who has been caught in the backwash. This bird's patience pays off as it tosses its catch into the air and swallows it whole. A brown pelican was all too eager to become part of the photo shoot, so I took a few steps back and the pelican gave me this nice big smile. At least, I think that might be a smile. I don't know. Do birds smile? Another snowy egret on a different set of weed covered rocks uses a similar tactic to catch some food. This bird waits for the wave to bring the fish right to its beak. The water level rises and the bird is so close to being submerged, but it has used this tactic before and it knows the water levels quite well. The water level recedes and the egret comes away with a nice catch. Meanwhile, all the people along the rocks are patiently waiting to catch fish using their fishing poles. If these birds could laugh, I bet they would be laughing at all of those people now. It didn't take long for other snowy egrets to see how successful this one was, and suddenly there were quite a few of them flying in. These birds are always full of great photo opportunities, especially when there is competition for food involved. There is always one bird who thinks it owns the area, and it has no problems telling everyone who's boss. The increased speed of 9 frames per second really helped me capture every goofy moment of this loud, boisterous bird. Some birds just don't care for all that drama. This great egret had the right idea. By staying away from the competition, it had the entire area to itself, and less competition meant more food for this bird. And yes, it managed to grab two fish at one time. Talk about being efficient. But there were more fish to be had, and this great egret wasn't quite full. A nice head-on shot for this toss into the air. What a weird looking view. The bird almost looks cross-eyed in this shot. And one more fish. This one was a little smaller, but it appeared to be screaming with its mouth wide open like that. And here's the toss into the air and that poor little fish still has its mouth wide open. I'm really enjoying the added speed of the grip. Look at all of them. The black belly skimmers. I don't know if they're coming out on there or not, but there's a bunch of them flying up over the beach over that way. Oh my gosh. Look at them. It's like a big swirly thing of them. And here's a shot of that big swirly thing of black skimmers. Swirly thing? Yeah, I was definitely at a loss of words in that situation, but the shot came out nice. There's a great blue heron right here and he's been fishing. So I'm gonna see if I can get some shots of him. They're always fun to watch because they'll spear the fish with their beaks. As soon as I started watching that great blue heron, another one flew in, presenting me with the perfect opportunity to capture some awesome in-flight shots of this large bird. 
An aperture of f8 created a wide enough depth of field to get the entire bird in nice sharp focus, but these two large birds in one small area meant that it was time for a duel. On the left and weighing in at 5 pounds is our challenger. On the right and weighing in at 6 pounds is the local champion. The local champion advances with a nice wing and feather display, and the fearless challenger extends both wings and moves closer. The two birds meet in the middle, and there's a standoff as they both raise their necks high into the air. The local champion stretches out one ring like it's ready to slap the challenger, and this proves to be enough to scare the challenger away. That's right, this is my spot. You stay over there and everything will be just fine. How about a nice close-up shot of that champion bird? Yep, what a beautiful bird. It's always awesome when birds sit nice and still for a good close-up, like this little blue heron. How cooperative. And of course the D850 captures incredible detail. Oh, you gotta check this out. There's these jellyfish over here that are really cool looking. They're called Portuguese man o war And they're like these big balloons, big blue balloons. But if you get these things on you, oh man, it's painful. But come check them out, they're really cool. Yeah, you can really see the tentacles. Sometimes they go really, really far. But those wrap up around you, and man, it's like getting stung by a whole bunch of bees at one time. Really pretty though. The snowy egrets were finally done fishing and fighting, and a nice full belly makes for a very content bird who really doesn't mind me moving in for some nice close-up shots. Here's the beauty of owning the D850 with the grip. You really do get the best of both worlds. You can capture some nice detail like this, and then when the action picks up, you can capture every moment at 9 frames per second. The D500 still beats out the D850 on pure speed with 10 frames per second, but the detail level of that 45 megapixel sensor in the D850 is unmatched in any other Nikon camera body. Let's put that nine frames per second to the test with a very fast bird that is extremely difficult to photograph, the belted kingfisher. I was lucky enough to find one hunting and managed this series of shots. I used a shutter speed of 1 3200th of a second and an aperture of f8. The shutter speed proved to be fast enough to stop the action. You can just barely see the kingfisher coming out of the water in this first shot. In the second shot, the kingfisher is still trying to get out of the water. And finally, in this third shot, the kingfisher is out of the water and on its way back to its perch. Immediately after that, the kingfisher dropped out of the tree and flew right towards me. I grabbed a few more in-flight shots before the kingfisher vanished. Or so I thought. The kingfisher made another pass from the opposite direction and I was able to get some good close-up in-flight shots with this final one being over a nice blue sky. Awesome. The action in the inlet wasn't slowing down either. A pair of birds were fighting over something, but at this distance it's difficult to see what they're fighting over. If only the lead bird would turn and fly towards me so I could get a better look. Sometimes all you have to do is ask because that's exactly what the lead bird did and now it's quite easy to see what these two birds were fighting over. A nice plump fish. Again a fast shutter speed of 1 3200th of a second and an aperture of f8 proved to be the perfect combination to capture this awesome bird with its tasty meal. A tricolored heron was hanging out by the shore and they're always worth waiting around for. Let's see if we can get some action from this bird. I lowered my shutter speed in this shot to 1 2500th of a second and this proved to be fast enough to stop the motion of the wiggling fish but not quite fast enough to freeze the motion when the tricolored heron tossed that fish into the air. I should have gone with at least 1 3200th of a second for this shot but I won't complain. And now for the close-up portrait shot. In this first shot, there's that nice blue background. I took one step to the left and got on a lower level in order to put some clouds behind the bird. And look at the difference in this shot. I like them both, but I found that subtle little change in my position had such a huge impact on the final image. That's pretty crazy. So there's about maybe 30 or 40 pelicans feeding along the inside of the inlet here. And they're eating needlefish. They're these really long, skinny fish, about like this, if you can tell. And it's really weird when they catch them because it looks like a snake and their beak flipping back and forth. It's really cool to watch. And if you can see, but they're all over the inlet out here. And there's an occasional osprey showing up, like there's one coming right now, but they don't seem to be feeding. I grabbed this shot of an osprey coming in for a landing and then immediately moved to focus on this brown pelican as it flew in. I wanted to get a closer look at all of those pelicans feeding on needlefish down below. 
Here you can clearly see a needlefish trying to escape with its mouth wide open. These fish have very sharp teeth along their upper and lower jaw. So at this point, the needlefish is doing everything it can to escape, including biting the pelican's face. Here's a better shot of the struggle. You can see the needlefish with its mouth wide open, but let's get a little bit closer. In this shot, the needlefish is coming out of the right side of the pelican's mouth, and its head is wrapped around the pelican's beak in a loop. And I believe that mouthful of teeth has found a nice hold on the other side. And finally, one last close-up shot of the struggle where all you can see now is the very tip of that needlefish's mouth. I noticed the osprey feeding far off in the distance and I quickly changed to focus on them. Even at this distance, you can clearly see that this osprey has managed to pull a nice sized catfish from the water and another osprey flying over with a nice catch. This one was a little closer. Here are the settings I used for this flyby. With all the clouds overhead, I wanted to keep my shutter speed a little lower because they were blocking all of the good light. If only the osprey would fly a little bit closer and those thick clouds would pass. And again, my wish was granted. This osprey was nice enough to fly so close that I managed to get the entire bird in the frame. The lighting was really nice too because it completely lit the entire bird. If only it would bank so I could get a shot of that magnificent wing spread. And there it is. Look at the size of that beautiful wingspan. Again, I managed to fill the entire frame with this beauty and the detail on a tight close-up crop is just incredibly beautiful. A couple more shots as the bird passed and this time there is just the right amount of light puppy clouds in the background. And check out this bird's tail feathers. In both of these shots, you can clearly see each and every feather. That's just incredible. Let's see if we can find a couple more osprey that are feeding. I managed one nice close-up shot of this osprey with a fish. Look at those talons. This bird isn't about to let go of that fish anytime soon. Then I noticed an osprey off in the distance. It had a needlefish in its talons. I grabbed a quick shot before my son alerted me to an osprey a little closer that had just hit the water. Look at that needlefish with its mouth wide open, but those big talons aren't letting go. As the bird ascended, I grabbed this shot and I really like it. The pier in the background provides some nice depth to the photo and the people on the pier help add some character and perspective too. And of course, you have that nice tight focus on the osprey with the needlefish and its talons as it takes to the sky. The needlefish still not ready to give up, putting up a nice teeth-filled fight all the way to the end as the osprey ascends higher and eventually disappears into a cloud-filled sky. An excellent example of the determination of life between two opposing forces. Check out my shirt. You ever make mistakes in life? Let's make them birds. Yep. Yeah. No other birds. Bob Ross was a cool guy, man. All right, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share the video. That's really helpful. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click the thumbs up, and as always, leave comments. Let me know what you thought of the video, what you thought of the images. So far, I'm really, really enjoying the added two frames per second on the D850. It's making it a dream camera come true. And until next time, see you later.